and then we go to the next group of uh, presenters, that is uh, Kea and uh, Niels, and they will present all related to, uh, to wages. And, and as you know, well, the Wage Indicator is an organization and a type of website with wages. And we started in the beginning in 2000, um, of course, with wages. So Kea and Niels will present a bit more about that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Niels, can you please show again the slides? Niels, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. So this is a joint presentation by uh, Niels and me, uh, and it's about the wages in the wage indicator. Can we have the next slide, please? Yeah. Okay, it was back in 1999 when Pauline came to visit me and told about a website there that showed uh, wages earned in occupations with a very focus on high educated males. And Pauline was angry because it should also cover females and low educated persons wages. So the question was, can we develop a similar tool and focus on all the target groups? Yes, we could. So by then we developed a salary survey which was published in women's magazines and posted on frequently visited websites. And Pauline launched the Loan Weiser website in the Netherlands. So, and then web visitors could explore the wages earned, namely share and compare. By 2022, we have a salary database with millions of observations from 2001 onwards till today. We have salary checks uh, in 147 countries in 40 plus languages. And we have a database of uh, more than 1,700 1, occupational titles in 40 plus languages. That is the whole trick of the whole machinery because all wages are specified by occupation. Can we have the next slide, please? Yeah. Okay, web visitors, how do, where do we get the wage data from? There are several sources from web visitors who complete either the salary survey, which is an all wage indicator website, in the national language and post it continuously, or the salary check, which is basically the very short uh, salary survey and provides information about the peer group, who, uh, what are the earnings in the same occupation. Then Wage Indicator has face-to-face -face salary surveys, which are project-based, not continuously, to among others in Bangladesh and Myanmar, uh, there are the decent work check surveys, as Natya already told you about. In Indonesia and Ethiopia, we also use the wage data from those surveys. And we have the gig worker surveys in selected countries. Then we have data from salary guides and pay tables, which are usually annually updated and which are freely available online from. Um, vacancies vacancy sites or from temp agencies. And then we use external survey data whenever available. Uh, and specifically Martin Guzzi is great in finding this kind of uh, data from external sources. So these are the sources of our rich data. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Okay, um, we do recruit uh, survey respondents or respondents into our salary check and our salary survey by the jobs and salary pages. Imagine that we have one, uh, wages 
rate information for 1,700 occupational titles. And somehow uh, vet visitors need to find these pages. And that is through our jobs and salary pages. We have more than 400 jobs and salary pages per country, per language. And uh, each job and salary page has an entry into the salary check. For example, you can see here at the left-hand side, take the salary survey, and then web visitors can click an occupation. They can take the salary survey catering work. They can, so this is the kind of uh, messages that is in the jobs and salary pages so that they enter into the salary survey or the salary check. Can we have the next slide, please? Okay, wage data is used for the salary check. So we compute every half year, we compute what the average wages are per occupation. Oh, this is too quick. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I Sorry. pushed the button. Go on. Uh, so, then we have the jobs and salary pages, which are the landing pages, as I told already, uh, which shows the minimum and the maximum earnings per occupation. And we will soon include data from the salary guides here. We have the salary news from the content generated, which has automatic, automated news items. And uh, Niels will talk about that in a minute. And then we have the living wage tables. So. Next slide, please. No, too quick. Oh, no. still did. Okay, who is involved before Niels goes on? Yeah. Uh, who is involved from Wage Indicator Amsterdam? It's uh, me, it's Niels. It's the IT support in uh, our IT company. It's in Bratislava. Martin Guzzi, Lucia, and Thomas Carbina. And in Italy, it's the Daniela Cacon team with the data visuals and the API management. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, here. So still, I want to show you a screenshot of the salary survey, for example, the one in Australia. Here you can see that anyone who starts the survey, they can check which language they want to answer the survey in. And there's a message that they that the salary survey takes about 10 to 15 minutes and that that data will be used for the salary check and for scientific <coughs> research. Well, that's basically the salary survey. Next slide, please. Okay, salary check is basically the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, I think this is, it's you, Niels. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I think this is why I will take over for a quick look at um, <clears throat> the salary check and the job salary page where we present the data. And as, uh, as Kea said, the automated salary news. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see, the I think you can see it, um, the dynamic page on the left, the salary check. And I think that looks very really cool, uh, but the counterpart, the, the um, what is isn't cool about that, uh, that is Google doesn't like this a lot. So because it's a dynamic page, it is the static page, um, and that makes it harder for Google to index it. And then I think uh, what Kea has been explaining, uh, what is useful then this job salary page, and that's on the right. And it contains a lot of information on the jobs, on the salaries. Um, but again, it also has some issues. For example, you can, if you look closely at the right picture for the job survey, all these yellow marked uh, sentences are links. And that's also something that Google sometimes has some issue with and other search engines as well, uh, with having a lot, process a lot of links and making sure that these are not spam links, for example. <clears throat> Um, 
and I think, uh, but still, these both both tools together with sur uh, salary survey are great in getting wages from people and also in sharing them with people. And that's, I think, one of the great things that we are doing. Uh, but still, uh, yeah, I've told you about this, about the challenges, about uh, the SEO, the Google, uh, how Google uh, relates to this. And so we thought about how can we, yeah, how can we do this better? How can we make sure <coughs> that also Google likes what to do with this number, with these wages? And uh, we've experienced, uh, I've experienced that, for example, on the Dutch website uh, and other websites as well, that the most effective way to present salaries is to write a news story or create a data page because these are picked up well by search engines. Um, <coughs> And ideally, to make use of all the salary data that is available, uh, we will write news items of all these jobs. So like the 400 and job, salary page, uh, job and salary pages or the 1,400 that we have available. Uh, but of course, that wouldn't be possible manually because there will be a lot of these uh, a lot of jobs in all these different websites because you have like more than 200 websites and it would add up to a lot of things, a lot of work. So we had to think of a better way to realize this. And I was inspired last summer by various news websites that uh, use automatic journalism and they report on local and national elections. And I thought, why couldn't we do the same for salaries? So creating salary news generated on a template. And to address this, right now, the content generator is being developed by uh, Witcher, who is part of our IT team. And I would just go to the next slide quickly. You could go back here, but just to show quickly what, ha what he's been working on. Uh, so we have a template and that generates a news item. And because this is a system of pre-written sentences, uh, there shouldn't be any huge issues in news items. It's not totally AI. So we still have control about the contents and every sentence has one or more duplicates and words that were replaced. So this ensures that no news item will look the same. And of course, if there's no data or too little data, no news item will be generated. This is the same as the salary check and the job salary pages. <clears throat> and of course, we don't only want these news items because that, that it, I think it looks nice. This is just the first version that you're seeing now, uh, but there are some people to fill out their own salaries and their own wages. And that's also should be, that is going to be included to have these buttons that you can also see in the salary, um, uh, sorry, in the Japanese salary pages, uh, that people can fill out their own wage. Uh, that should be included here as well. So people are not only going to this page to Google and they see, hey, this is my wage, but they can also say, hey, this is what what I should earn, what I what I actually earn, and that is why I think. Um, <clears throat> having these uh, news items, we can achieve multiple goals with it. So we improve search engine optimization because having this news item with a clear salary, with a clear job, it helps people to go there. Uh, with these uh, links to the salary survey, we can create survey intakes and we are creating a limited archive of previous data because of these news items, there will be a new one every year. So we have this archive of this salaries of all these jobs that are, of course, for which you have enough data. Uh, and I think that is what I wanted to tell about this new project. It's still going on. We're still working on it, uh, but it looks very promising because it can save us a lot of work in the long run. So, uh, Kea, I think uh, back to you. Yeah. Yeah, Niels, thank you so much. I like the, the news gen content generated so much. So, um, plans for the coming years is sources of wage data not yet used. Uh, we do not use for the salary check the minimum wages database with occupational rates, but we could develop that. That is one issue. The CBA database for CBAs with occupational rates, um, that is another source and an Third source are the public sector wages. Some of you 
may know that we have had uh, web pages about public sector pages quite some years ago, uh, but we can now set it up more structured and more in a database so that we can more easily maintain such a database. Um, and we can create a database of job titles plus the wage amount per country per year. Uh, <coughs> so that is also a source that is used uh, that is useful for jobs and salary pages and salary news. Well, those are basically our plans. Uh, next slide. That's it. <laughs> okay, we're <have> done. <laughs> Hey, thanks, thanks a lot, um, uh, Niels and um, um, and Kea. That um, uh, 